Run for the Song podcast. Hello, and welcome to episode two of the Drum for the Song podcast, hosted by me, Dane Campbell. This week, we're really lucky. We've got Ryan Richards from the band Funeral for a Friend with us. I've decided to split the interview into two separate episodes. So part one will be this one, and then the second half of the interview will be in episode three. Uh, In part one, we talk about how he joined the band in the early days and when they got signed. He also talks about their tour with Iron Maiden. He also talks about how he decided to quit the band and go full-time managing other bands. So and that's what he does now. And he also talks about the, the charity shows they did for a fan last year who was uh, diagnosed with terminal cancer. They raised a hell of a lot of money for, for his family and his children. I hope you enjoy this interview and don't forget you can follow me on social media at Drum for the Song. On Facebook you can search Dane Campbell Drummer and I've got an official Drum for the Song Facebook group that you can join. So I hope you enjoy the interview. Drum for the Song Podcast. Hello, I'm here with Ryan Richards from Funeral for a Friend. How are you, Ryan? Hello, Dane. I'm doing all right, mate. How are you? Yeah, good. Yeah, not not so bad. Yeah, um, yeah. Can't can't really complain. Still in lockdown, in enjoying it, you know, as much as possible. Weird times. What have you been up to besides starting your own podcast? Well, yeah. Um, this is you know taking up a bit of time. I have actually got myself a job, which is a bit good of a man. bit of a downer, but you know, trying to show initiative and all that and. Well, that's it, man. You know, it's a tough old time for the industry at the minute. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, whatever you can do to, to pay those bills, isn't it? Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, I thought, you know, just preparing for the future because I don't really know how long the kind of live music industry is going to kind of be on a halt, as, as I'm sure you're being affected by it as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, from, from my side, obviously, with um, doing, doing little bits and, and pieces with uh, with Funeral for a Friend and um, and from the management side of things as well, which, um, you know, I've been doing for the last, well, since since I stopped uh, touring with Funeral, really. So, so yeah, it's kind of kind of hit me from from both sides of there, which, uh, but, you know, you just got to got to got to crack on, stay positive and um, make sure that that your bands are staying creative and, and trying to use this time as productively as possible, really. I um, mean, you know, uh, that's easy to say because obviously, like you said, you've got to get your jobs and, and make sure the bills are paid. But um, but yeah, hopefully hopefully bands are out there and, um, and taking this time to, you know, whether that be writing or just reassessing the way they do things, look for those silver linings where we can find, find them, I suppose. Yeah, totally, actually. That's, that's a really good point. Um, I think a lot of bands are probably... Well, the ones that live close to each other to actually, you know, maybe get together if they're allowed. Um, obviously, there's a lot of people doing things over video calls and digital streaming nowadays. So I don't know if many, many, if many bands are taking that route to maybe write material. I don't know, but yeah, yeah, some bands are. You know, some some of the bands I work with are, are doing that, and uh, I guess uh, the old thing of, of sending ideas back and forth, their you know, their files for Logic or GarageBand or yeah. or whatever it is. It's, I suppose it's a lot easier now to to do that in this day and age, just to send those files around um, and and put things together remotely. Um, I mean, I don't know how it is with you doing like the the Phil and the Bastards and stuff. If you if you're actually able to do stuff with your brothers, or I mean, I know you don't <laughs> hold it together or whatever, but yeah, it's it's it has been difficult. But we did we we've actually since since the start of lockdown, we've literally recorded an album. Oh um, right! But we've all we've never been in the same room together while we've done it. Yeah. So it's been a bit of a, a bit of a weird one from that kind of perspective. Um, it's, it's either been because Todd's producing him, my brother. Yeah. It's either been me, me and him, or him and Tyler, or him and Neil, or him and my dad. Never, yeah. never more than two. <laughs> Which is the only downside that I see from that is kind of putting your ideas across with the other, on the other instruments that we were kind of used to doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, again, I suppose you know, going back to looking for the, the silver linings of things, it, it probably this album will sound pretty unique because of the way you've done it and you know like you've said usually you might go in and um 
you know, one of the other guys might comment, oh, why don't you do this with the drums? Why don't you do that? And you might find yourself, you, you've gone in there now and maybe a little more unrestricted, or a bit, you know, it's a bit more of a pure expression of, you know, how you play. I, I don't know, you know, yeah. it's those things, you know, where people will listen to this this record and and maybe hear a bit more of each person getting their way, you know what I mean? And, and playing just exactly what they want to play on it. Yeah, that's I, to be honest. I think yeah, you've got the you've hit the nail on the head there. Apart from I guess maybe Todd being able to put his opinions oh. forward, um, I guess that's still limiting. You know how, how you know how you're being restricted to play. So obviously yeah. me, me and Todd, Todd, obviously Todd can play drums and he's producing. So he kind of has suggested things for me to play, but I haven't had any feedback from the other members of the band. You know, with regards to like. We we did we did actually write it together. But yeah. We kind of jammed the songs together without Neil. So we did do that part before lockdown. Yeah. So at least otherwise, I don't know what, what the hell we do, but uh, <laughs> we were lucky really. We kind of just got you know twelve songs together um, instrumentally, and then I went and recorded them on my own. But it was interesting. Um, the last interview I did with Nigel from Saxon. He actually prefers recording his drum parts without having any of the band there, and that's how mm. he chooses to do it. And yeah, so that, that was quite interesting to hear that. That's how he normally does it because it wasn't normal for me. No, no, no. yeah, I, 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 I can understand that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it can be a bit, um, you know, you've got something in your head and you and you, you try it, you're playing it, and, and there's all these these voices coming from the control room. Sometimes it can be a bit. Uh, off putting and, and and take you out of the the moment a little bit, but um, but yeah, I, I guess it's necessities having to do it this way this time, but but you know, it just might might come out that much cooler for it, you know, that, uh, yeah, at least different maybe. for it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I'm I'm looking forward to people kind of hearing a track whenever we unleash one and seeing what yeah. everyone thinks. Really, I, I think I think we've done a decent job. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Um, yeah. Yeah, so um, obviously we've talked a little bit about how this pandemic is kind of affecting you from a like a management perspective as well as being in a band. Mm. Do you think it will change like live gigs going forward? Like, do you think with capacities and things like that? Would, I guess we don't know, but I mean, I think inevitably for for a while. Um, I mean, it's, it's it's funny saying that when we've all looked at the you know, seen the images this week from from you know like yeah. pubs on the weekend in in London or Soho or, or wherever, and and just seeing thousands of people just you know, in each other's faces, really. Just and you, th I guess you think to yourself, uh, you know, oh well, well, why can't we do shows then? Which, yeah, it's, it, that is that is true, but it's like, do we really want to contribute to to going back to a second wave of of this and and, and setting setting ourselves even further back. So it's, it's really delicate balance at the minute where everyone uh, wants to get back to normality, but I think we just got to accept that, that things are going to be different, at least for a while. Um, mm. As you say, you know, in terms of capacities and in terms of people needing to, you know, whether it be wear masks or, or, or whatever, it, you know, it ends up being, uh, you know, things being a bit different. They will be, but um, hopefully if everyone's, sensible and, and and patient and uh everyone does the right things and we can try to try to get back on track but but yeah it's going to change i think for, for for a little while still yeah no 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 i totally agree with you there um i guess it's just a waiting game and obviously every, all the different countries are going to have their different rules and regulations so i guess as artists we're gonna to have to adjust to whatever they they want yeah you know? Well, that's it. There's some Scandinavian countries at the moment that are putting on shows with, I think it's like 300 capacity or less. Um, so it, it seems like things like that uh, are getting back in some countries. But I think, um, yeah, it feels like the, you know festivals is obviously a difficult one because that many people together, you know, you're talking tens of thousands of people. I don't know whether that is the last thing that that comes through but but then again that's you know you're talking june july before those come back in so so who knows i mean you know we're sometimes i, I keep forgetting that we're i'm talking about like a year away when i'm talking about 
you know the festivals and whatnot because we're only in the start of July now. But um, yeah, hopefully between now and then we can we can start getting there and, and making those changes and and start sliding back to normality <laughs> piece by piece. <laughs> yeah, if that ever yeah exactly if it ever gets mm. normal again. So yeah. yeah yeah well let's hope and hopefully the the bands and well anyone who works in the industry can somehow financially survive until then so they can they can still be doing it that's well the, that's, that's been the, the big other, thing hmm. yeah i think that's what yeah. a lot of people are worried about um well that's it i mean it's been it's been so good that the um you know the entertainment the music business seems to be really um tight-knit and, and and has stayed positive and and supportive throughout these um these times you know you you've had people like the uh, organizations like the music venue trust doing uh the, you know the great the save our venue campaigns and uh everything else you know do, doing a really good job so it was it was nice to see uh, a couple of days ago about the the government um you know the the, the fund for the uh, the rescue package for, for the arts um so i mean at, at at this moment in time we're i guess not sure exactly how that's being distributed and when or, or whatever but i mean you know that's 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 a We'll take those um, those small victories. Well, hopefully, it doesn't turn out to be a small one. But you know, we'll we'll, we'll take all those um, the positive from all those things and and see how that helps us out. But um, but yeah, I mean, of course, it's been it's been a tough time for for, for so many people, and um, you know, I guess especially the, you know your venues and your, your touring um, touring crew or whatnot. Because if you're not on tour and if you you've not got gigs, then Hmm. You know, well, what have you got? You haven't you got nothing. much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, so yeah. So hopefully that um, that government fund will will go some way to to helping out in in, in the near future and well and beyond. Yeah, and it's really encouraging that they've actually acknowledged it now because it, it did seem as if you know they were just avo- you know avoiding the importance of the whole industry until the other day when it was brought up because they were trying to, I guess, they have got a lot to think about it to. Def- you know, to be fair to them. Um, and I guess, because we're in the industry, it's like the big major thing that it's affecting us and all our friends and, you know, and other people. Um, but the fact they've now acknowledged it and it's a massive um, amount of money to commit, really, which mm. I think I'm very impressed by that. Um, yeah, well, this is this has been the thing, I suppose. We've been, we've been seeing, um, you know, hospitality come back in and... Um, hairdressers and, uh, and things like that and and obviously seeing um you know the football and sports coming back um you know obviously behind closed doors and, yeah. and everything else but uh, and we've all been thinking you know, what about uh you know what about what about the arts what about what, what about music um and it's not as if we we were just coming from that place of you know just do it for us but but god you know this is um it's a it's it's a sector that contributes so much to the um to, to the country you know into in terms of um you know financials and, and everything like that so so much um you know it gives so much back so it's, it's nice to see that be appreciated and and recognized yeah no definitely um yeah so let's, let's have a little chat about funeral for a friend now if you don't mind of course um, yeah um so can you talk a little bit how how you joined the band and when 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 you got signed, how, what was the story there? There, I'm not that clear on all that myself. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'd been playing in bands, um, you know, doing doing the local circuits since I was you know 17, 18. So we're going back to um, you know 90, 97, 98 then, playing in bands. You know, I was in I was in a band um, in 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 the Pont de Breathe area, you know. Uh, where you guys are from yeah uh, i was in a band called uh trip cage which is where i first met um it's the band and myself and uh and darren smith the longtime um funeral for a friend guitar player actually the the, the way we met was back in the day you know you had your what was it called your, the free ads that was it the free oh, ads. Right. Yeah. yeah the free ads newspaper so so i literally i put a i put an ad in free ads you know a drummer looking for looking for band, um, the influences. I can't remember what the influences. It was, it was something like, it, it was pretty eclectic. It was something like Corn, uh, Queen, and Metallica. Or so, you know, it was, it was just, you know, all, all the big ones. But um, but yeah, you know, I got a phone call from from this guy and he's like, oh, you know, I live in, I live in Porth and I, I've got my own guitar and, 
my amp and blah 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 and I'm into all these bands and you know we got chatting and he came over my house like a couple of days later with his little amp and started playing and, and whatnot and I was like yeah cool cool so so yeah so so we started jamming then and um we we probably jammed for a couple of years just messing around in the well I mean didn't want to be messing around but it, it got that way because there was just different people in and out of the band you know it was like not really that serious and then we we put together trip cage then who um played around the the local scene for a while um which, which was cool and uh and yeah that, did that for a while and then i left uh trip cage to to start well to join another band called mongrel from the bridge end area and then we sort of restarted then as a new band called Honda McLean. So we, we started that band then. Um, so, you know, that started to do pretty well in, in the early 2000s. And, um, and yeah, the reason I got into, the way I got into playing with, with Funeral for a Friend was, is their drummer at the time, Johnny Phillips, um, who's um, well, now he's our, he, he's our, he's our promoter at, uh, at SJM concerts. You know, he, he promotes yeah. lots of big stuff like Fall Out Boy and Panic at Disco and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but he was drumming at the time and, and he got this job offer from SJM because he was putting on um, lots of live gigs and everything. So, so he, he, he went with that, you know, cause it was, it was a good job with good money and everything. And, um, and they asked me if I could step in to record a, they were doing a, a radio one session. Um, I can't remember who it was for back in the day. Um, what was it? Uh, no, I can't. Marianne Hobbs, maybe it was. Oh, nice. Uh, but yeah, so I so I got in and and did that, and I was oh we got a couple of gigs then because they had ju- they had just re- they had recorded the first EP and were getting a lot of um, attention for it, but uh, yeah I jumped in to do their radio one thing and then um, jumped in for another there was a couple of shows there was one like supporting Hell is for Heroes in Newbury and then there was a there was a there was a show in Cardiff at um, Cooper's Field. Uh, in in the nice. in the ground of the castle, which which is a cool thing. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, it, it went from there. And then the guys were like, you know, it, it was Darren who was in the band at that time who, who had asked me to, um, you know, come and help. But then at one of the rehearsals, and they were just like, oh man, you know, do you want to like join full time? Um, so like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so so I did that, and um, and that was what was that like late two thousand one, early two thousand two. And, and it stayed with the band until early 2012. So uh, how many albums was that? Five albums, maybe four or five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five, yeah. So, 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 yeah. That was uh, how how it all uh, how it all came to to me joining at least. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So yeah. So when you joined, did they already have a, a deal, like a record deal, or did that happen after? Or? Well, they had, there was this studio in Swansea called uh, Mighty Atom Studios. I don't know if you ever... Um, yeah, have you heard of that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's not there anymore, but it was, uh, it was, it was, it was a really cool uh, studio. They used to do a lot of stuff for the, the BBC and everything down there. And um, so it was a studio, but then there was also uh, the record label then. They were, they, they were doing some stuff, um, mostly with like uh, Swansea bands. It was, it was good, really good Swansea bands. It was, and it's from Swansea at the time. It was like um, uh, Liberty Thirty Seven, if you remember them. Uh, there was a band called Goat Boy who were really cool. A um, bunch of stuff, but basically, yeah. Before I joined the band, I mean, just before they'd gone in to to do this to record an EP there, um, which they did. And the guy who was engineering it, uh, a guy called Alwyn Davis, he he said to the the guys that run the label is like, oh, we had a we had a really good band in today. Um, it's really cool. It's it's really different. And um, and they're like, all right, okay, yeah, we'll we'll come in and you know check it out tomorrow when they're back in to do the vocals or whatever it was. And and they came in and um, and they were like, oh yeah, you know, we um, this is good. We'd we'd like to put this EP out on on our label um, and on our Mighty Atom label. And uh, I think um, they signed some deal for like five pound or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> It was something really ridiculous, you know. It was, it was at the time where it's like, bloody hell, you know, we're at least on a label, wow, you know. And so they did that, and um, I guess from there, then, you know, after I joined, um, we started touring and and writing more, and um, and we did the um, no, actually, yeah. So we so we started writing more then, and and getting a lot of label interest then, um, you know, from 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 bigger labels, really. Yeah. Uh, 
And I think at the time then, the, the, the Mighty Atom label, the guys at the label, they were like, oh, okay, you know, I, I understand that this is, they had, they had signed the band for then, like that deal included an album or two, I think. Um, wow. So when the other labels came in, they were, I guess they were saw an opportunity to, to sell the band. Sell, was, yeah, sell the, yeah, yeah, it was the best way to put it. So, so there, was, there, there was a lot of that. Um, we did a bunch of showcases for different labels and all that sort of thing. And they came to watch us on, on, on a couple of tours that we did. And, um, and yeah, so it, it was quite a difficult time um, back then trying to get to the place where that middle ground of the label will offer this much, but is that enough then for my Atom to, to let the band go? And we were sort of caught in the middle for a long time. There was all this legal stuff. Um, yeah. It ended up, you know, the, it ended up being, uh, resolved. Uh, if you look back on the the pressings of the of the fir- of the the four ways to scream your name EP and the um, and the first album, maybe even the second album, um, it's got the Mighty Atom logo on there oh, wow. as well. You know that was kind of part of it. Uh, so yeah, so we ended up signing. Then we we you know we did the whole thing, talking to different labels, and um, there was a label at the time then called uh, called Mushroom. Um, which is run by a guy called Corda Marshall, and and they had you know he had signed Muse to to, to Mushroom, he signed Ash, the Mushroom. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff, uh, Garbage. So it's like Muse, Ash, Garbage, um, and, oh. and we were like you know that was that was a a good label to be on. So yeah. we, we you know we were, we were talking to them for quite a long time, and then as it turned out, then he got the the in the middle of all this. He got offered to be the head of um, Atlantic in the UK, Atlantic Records. So it was like, oh, so it, at first we were like, ah, oh, shit, this is kind of messed this all up. You know, we wanted to sign to this mushroom label. Um, but as it turns out, then he's like, oh, no, I still want to sign you, but I'll sign you for Atlant- to, to Atlantic. Uh, and I'm going to take Muse and Ash as well and sign the darkness. So that will happen. Like at the same time, you know, his um, when he joined uh, Atlantic as the new head, he brought in, you know, I think it was that was the four bands that he that he brought over with him. So he was like Muse, um, yeah, Muse, Ash, us, and then Sign of the Darkness right after then. So so that was that was that, yeah. That's how we got. But they were happy. They were happy with him when he turned up then with all those bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he was yeah. he was there for, for a good while. Um, he's over at uh, he's over at BMG Warner's now. Okay. He's, uh, definitely, um, you know, one of those uh, very respected industry figures. Who's, I mean, he, he bloody signed Take That back in the day. Was it Take That? Or was it E Seventeen? Maybe maybe both of them. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there, so there you go. Yeah. That's that's, that's an amazing story though. Um, yeah. It's, it's just you know because you local band for, to me as well so actually hearing the story like that is quite quite inspiring it was really, really exciting yeah yeah really was, to what yeah. could you know what can happen potentially you know if you work hard and well know, well right that was it you. i mean yeah i think i think that was it you know at, at the time uh, um you know where we the valleys and um and everything you know bridgend and uh pontypridd and, and Aberdeen and those sort of areas you know we'd we'd seen you know bands like like dub war get signed and um you know and and, and then of course you know lost profits came along and, and got signed and, and and got massive and they were from the, the same town as us really so and so we were like oh you know give us a bit of belief that you actually could could do that um so so obviously that was that that was great and 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 then from that um it carried on then and um and you saw so other bands come through you, you obviously bullet from a valentine and and kids in glass houses and the blackout and um and all that you know you, you know you guys yourself with um you know with said mike and, and straight lines and and everything that's come from that and and yeah. you know kneel then with 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 dopamine and attack attack so so yeah it, it, it carried on from that which was which was great and, and something we always felt proud to be a part of you know and um Every time we, we would tour, you, you, you'd usually see a Welsh band on the bill with yeah, us. Definitely, you know, we, you know, always wanted that to to be a thing that we keep, kept bringing up. And and for a long time, I think it was um, the the hottest area in, in the world for 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 that sort of music. I think definitely at the time. I mean, I say for that sort of music, but 
even even you know different outside of that scene you, you had massive stuff like the stereophonics and and, and manic street preachers and um and all sorts really so so yeah it was it was it was, it was a really hot time yeah south wales was hot back then definitely for sure and this well it still is i think it's well you know some of the bands you manage that we'll talk about in a little bit um yeah. is massive for p- potential um still there feel like so, it's coming back again yeah it does yeah, yeah. Um, because things always have their peaks and troughs, I suppose, and um, and I suppose you know what you know, we split up around the same time as then kids in glass houses split up and the blackouts split up, and um, yeah, so there was a little dip really of I guess yeah. bands at a higher level because they'd all <laughs> they'd all packed it in, I suppose, or you know, taken high mm. atuses and yeah, well, that's it, you know, it, it takes time for things to to come around and um, and re establish, uh, and it was. It definitely had that, but um, it, it, it does feel really positive now in terms of uh, bands coming through. No, yeah, awesome. Um, what so? What we? What would you say was your biggest moment when you were in funeral for a friend? Like, what were your favourite memories? You know, any places or festivals you did? Or yeah, like yeah. There's definitely a few down the years. Um, I mean, I see. Yes, I guess same for same for most bands. Really, the first time you see, you know, you've you've got your your debut album CD in your hands, you know, you, th- things like that, and you, especially when it's a vinyl as well, because that's like, you know, you, you, you when you're in bands, you you had your demos, you know, you had your demos on CD, and sometimes you, you get them pressed up so they look really legit, you know, even if they weren't on a label, but but having a vinyl um, was just like wow, you know, you got your, yeah. your vinyl, but um, but I mean on that the you know, one of the one of the biggest things was was getting to go on tour with Iron Maiden um, early on because that was you know we we had done we done some cool tours with bands that we really liked and respected. You know, your bands like you in the scene like Boy Sets Fire and stuff like that, um, that that we really loved and respected. But obviously, Iron Maiden's a, a completely different kettle of fish playing arenas every single night and and that came around really kind of organically as well i mean and, and that ties into how we got signed to, to management in the first place because uh we were playing this at this event uh early on it was called the Kerrang weekend um and they had it down in uh Camber sands it was like a it's like a holiday camp it was, it was basically a butlins uh, yeah yeah and i'm pretty sure it was a butlins and and all the bands were staying in in the lodges and, and stuff like that and we and we played there and um and rod smallwood iron maiden's um manager was there i believe i believe it was because maybe you know one one of one of the maiden guys their son's band were playing i don't know if it was maybe i can't remember maybe adrian smith's son but um but anyway he, he was there and, and and rod happened to to catch us playing um, on that night, and, and and he thought it was great, and then he went back to um, to he, he was at Sanctuary at that time, Sanctuary Artist Management, and um, and one of the one of the younger managers at the time, Craig Jennings, um, who went on to be you know a, a long time manager, um, he told him you know you should go and see this band, I, I really think they're cool, and uh, and that's basically how we how we got signed to management, but um, but then when we went to the sanctuary offices in London to, to sign our deal um, just after we'd recorded our first album. Um, so we were there and, you know, did the, did the signing and everything. And, um, and I had like a pat over my shoulder. Um, and I turned around and this, uh, Miss Nico McBrain <laughs> from, from me and, uh, with a glass of red wine. And, and he's like, uh, oh, welcome to the family, son. You know, he's good. And I was like, oh, Jesus, wow, well, that's that's amazing. Oh, thank. You. And he, and but by chance, it was my birthday as well. It was like oh wow, my, like my twenty second birthday, and that, <clears throat> and um, he was like, oh, happy birthday as well. And I was like, how does he know it's my birthday? And uh, and then Rod came up there, and Rod Smallwood, and um, he had um, he, he had told Nick it was my birthday or whatever, and I was a drummer and blah blah blah. And um, and he said then he's like, oh, you know, he said, oh, I just be talking to Nico and the boys and what do you, you know what do you think about about going out on tour with, with them in in October and I was just like well, seriously like and he's like yeah 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 he's just like you know he'd he'd given the record to I think it was maybe Steve um Steve Harris and um and maybe Bruce as well and uh, they they had youngish kids at the time and um I think you know one or two of them really 
you know liked this and, and knew of the band and uh, so they checked it out and uh, I think Stephen Brewster said yeah yeah we you know we like these guys uh, let's let's take them out and and that was that it was just us and me and, um, you know just a two band bill yes yeah. I was at the Car- Cardiff show I was I was there I remember. Right, yeah, there you go, yeah. It was probably the first time I'd, yeah, it would have been the first time I'd seen you guys and probably Maiden, but uh, yeah, right. it was, it was, yeah, it was cool. Um, I, it was, I was going yeah, to ask was, how did, how did it go in, because obviously the genre is a bit misfashed in terms of, yeah, well, it's rock it music, it. isn't it, but. Well, I was there, I mean, it, it, it was, it was, it was pretty tough, like, I mean, it was, um, you know, it's a, it's a hard crowd to play in front of just because they're so passionate for, for Maiden, really. Yeah. Um, more than anything else, and um, you know, I remember the first night on tour, we we were playing in in, in Germany in this big, um, this big uh, arena, and and we played, and it was like, yeah, this isn't this isn't going very well at all, really, you know, and um, you know, we got some quiet parts in our songs, and people started chanting "Maiden" in the middle. Uh, of the <laughs> we we're like, ah, oh. like and then we went off stage, and and uh, and Rod was there. He's like, ah, oh, it's, it's really good. I was like, oh, I don't know, man. Yeah, they didn't seem to go for it. And he's like, oh yeah, the last support band we had, they, they, they were throwing stuff at them. Um, so you've done all right. I was like, oh, <laughs> fair enough. And yeah, so that, that, was, was, um, that was a result then, basically, just to only get maiden chance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so but but to be to be honest, man, you know, it was we learned so much from from that tour. Um, the fact that it was a bit difficult because yeah. Up until that point, we sort of had everything our way, you know what I mean? We'd, um, people were were into the band and, you know, the, the bands that we toured with were sort of tailor-made for our type of music, you know, and, and everyone was was digging it. And I don't want to say, like, we had an easy ride, but every every show we played w- was was good, really, yeah. you know? I mean, and people were there and appreciated us. And so to get, to be playing a show like that where there's, you know, A, it's such a big show, and and really having to work for it, you know, really having to work hard to to win people over was 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 good for us. You know, we needed that at the time. We needed to, um, you know, that kick up the ass, I suppose. You know, to step her up and be like, right, boys. You know, it's not always going to be this easy. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah, you you know, you gotta you gotta shape up. You you you're on a you know you're playing on a different um, on a different level now on top of the band like Maiden who were just. You know the, the consummate professionals and master of the the stagecraft and and everything else and and like I say we just learned so much about how to how to present ourselves you know how to have that attitude of um, you know confidence I suppose and really putting that out there and 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 not letting um, not letting that that defeat us and, and just you know it was really good for Matt our singer at the time just uh, you know, Bruce had a lot of uh, good. Um, advice and feedback for him you know and just saying you know every time you, you perform you need to just think about you you know you perform into the to the person right at the back of the room and and if they if they can't you know you need to make sure that they can understand everything you're saying clearly and um and things like that you know just 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 made us made us better if you've been on tour with them two and a half months and um and uh, yeah, definitely stood us in good stead for when we were able to go and, and play bigger shows, both with you know other bands and, and festivals, and, and then eventually ourselves. So it, it was a big, uh, big learning curve there. Oh, that's that's amazing. Yeah, I, I, I get. I bet it was yeah, not just the on stage craftsmanship, but I bet you learned a lot about how to behave. You know, with <clears> you know, with not getting in the way in the crew, and just how to behave backstage. I bet that was a good tour to you. Yeah. Uh, mm. a lot of people don't think about that because well it was that i mean it was it, yeah. it was how how we should behave to, to you know when we're on tour with with, with with other support you know support and other bands but but not just that but they also taught, taught us a lot about how you know the responsibility that we have as as a headliner when we take out a band and um yeah and how to treat them because i mean if if maiden can can look after a support band you know then then nobody's got any excuse you know if if, Ma- if maiden can go out of their way to to make a make a support band feel comfortable which 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 they did i mean they they, they were amazing first night of the tour we we, we went in you know we went in our, our dressing room and um i think i think pretty much to a man they all you know at separate times knocked on the door and came in and 
shook all our hands, you know, and welcome to the tour and, and everything else. And, and the, the crew were great as well. And um, you know, there's there's one particular point in the in the middle of the tour when um, well, this this was the thing when when we got off with the tour, Darren's uh, wife was was pregnant at the time, and oh, wow. um, so how it what how they worked it out, which which is which is quite quite amazing really is that she was due to give birth um we had like two we were in europe and there was two days off in between and then that i think either the first or the second day off was the day she was due to to give birth so 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 he so darren flew home after this the one show from europe um you know attend got to the birth you know it all worked wow. out and, and then flew back then to the tour the next day for the next show and um and then when he turned up, then at the well, when, when, when we turned up at the at that sh particular show, we got in the dressing room and there was like three bottles of um, of, of champagne and 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 um, a card, you know, signed by all the all the maiden guys. Wow. There, you know, um, congratulations on you know the birth of your son and everything. And um, and then they came in just before we were about to play. I think it, yeah, it was Adrian Smith came in and, and um, I said, you know, give Darren the congrats and everything. I said, oh, because every, every night, pretty much after the show, they would um, get in, in 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 a car each and and, and fly and fly back or, or go to the hotel or what, you know whatever it was. I said, oh, you know, we'll um, we'll stick around tonight after the show if you you know we want to come up and um, and crack open those uh, those bottles. You know, we'll have, we'll, have, we'll have a few drinks upstairs. And so we did. You know, we watched the show and we we came back and didn't didn't put you know he's like ah oh, you know perhaps they might not be in the mood or whatever or might be tired or whatever so so we didn't really didn't push it you know we just stayed in our dressing room and and sure enough you know knock on the door you know coming up you know coming up the dressing room and boys and so I think it was only um a couple of the other guys had, had gone somewhere so so me and Darren went up and we were um just drinking with um you know they, they were all there and and did the old handshakes but um it was uh Adrian and uh, and Nico who's sort of drinking all night really you know mm -hmm. and, and talk, uh, just talking about um, old times and, and, and everything and uh, te them telling all these amazing stories and everything so so yeah it was great and, and, and then like I say every every day at, at catering there was no like um, segregated areas or anything or like you know this time is maiden time and this time is it's like no you know everyone just turned up at the same time and and sat down to to dinner and you know would sit on the same table or whatever it's just really cool man and taught us a lot like i say you know off stage on stage everything really so so that was that was a really big cool thing for us yeah it sounds like they they really made it feel like a nice family for you which is that's awesome considering the size of the band so that's excellent yeah yeah no it, it, it was it was it was amazing man we had we had this thing then it was about it was about a year after that maybe a couple of years after that um Actually, saying it, it was probably about three or four years after that, um, where Maiden headlined Reading Festival, and um, and we went and um, and uh, we we were, we, were, we were side stage and um, watching the band before Maiden come and who it was, but uh, Chris, our guitarist, was there with his brother Kerry, who's like a massive Maiden fan, and um, you know he had never met any of Maiden, but he's standing there and he can see, see Steve Harris coming over. And Chris's brother's like, oh man, it's Steve Harris, and then uh, and this is like years after, and uh, and then um, Steve Harris just just walks up and, and he's like, all right, Chris, good good, good show earlier, mate. He goes, oh, I love the new record, and his brother's just standing there like, I was like, what's what's going on? <laughs> but like I said, it was years after, you know, and just remembering people's first names, and it's just really really cool band. So yeah, no, I can't say enough good stuff about you, mate, and I could talk all day. But no, I know, <laughs> I know, I know you're a fan. That's awesome. So yeah, well, yes, you kind of mentioned, obviously you're, you've gone into management now. So you left the band in 2012. Yes. How did you make that decision to kind of actually um, pack it in? And yeah, yeah. I mean, most of it was, was, was being away so much really because, um, because we were for, for, for as long as I was in the band really because we, we, would, we would do a lot of stuff in America. Um, you know, we toured in America more than more than anywhere else. Oh, wow. um, we'd, but then we'd go out there and we'd probably be there for around three months then at a time. And um, you know, I just um, we'd had my um, me and my wife had uh, you know we'd obviously got married and we, we had a daughter and everything. And um, and those trips just started to get 
more and more difficult to, to do really um especially you know walking out the door and knowing that you're not going to be back for three months and um and back it wasn't quite so easy back then with stuff like this you know with with, with zoom or facetime or anything else it was it was still kind of phone calls really um yeah. skype if you're lucky but the thing is you know when you're on toy you never really get the the internet to do that um so that so that was the biggest thing to be honest you know not, not being not being away for, for so long and um and i and i'd been i'd started managing back you know i suppose from about 2008 it, it started out um with just man well i don't know if i'd even call it manager at the time it, it started out from a place where i've seen all these cool bands in in, in the south wales area and just wanted to help really yeah. you know? just wanted to be like show other people like all these cool bands and um as i say we used to take welsh bands on tour but i, I kind of wanted to go that that extra mile a little bit and and, and work with bands so so you know you, obviously you you'll remember at the time you know i started working with um with uh with, with straight lines at, at, at the time and um and then you know with 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 tyler's band then with the people of poet who were tiger please back tiger then please, yeah yeah, and um, Cuba, and Cuba, Cuba, Cuba. Yeah, who um, um, I think it's a couple of them play in in, in Tom Jenkins' band, don't they now? Yeah, um, the yeah, it's Leo. Le um, yeah. is, is drumming. Yeah, um, and Danny's on the piano, Danny, isn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, it. yeah. But so, so yeah. So at the time, you know, that that was um, I'd uh, I guess I'd been learning a bit about management then and getting into it. And I, and I suppose I thought, because you know, I never was gonna not do anything musical related. I, I know I wouldn't have done that. I just wanted to do something in music. So I just thought, you know what, let's just go full time into this, really, into into managing, and um, and that's that's what I've done ever since. Nice. No, that's yeah. cool. No, it must have been. I can understand totally why you decided to do that. You know, having a child and like I. I've never even been away on tour anywhere near that long, like in one go. My, my dad used to go away for that kind of period. Yeah, and sure. Obviously, I used to miss him. You could see it from the other side. Yeah, yeah totally. So yeah, it was it was tough because he, you know, he wasn't around that much. So totally, yeah. totally understand why you would have well, done that's that. It, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 so you, you obviously don't regret making that decision. That was obviously what. No, <laughs> no. It was it was it was for the right reasons, and um, yeah, I see that the you know funeral went kept on going um a few years after that up until up until 2016 then um you know for, for what were the final shows then so you know that that, that was cool um you know that they, they left on a high it was cool to be able to go out and like perform with them you know i just did like you know a song just as a, a as a thing um, yeah me, uh, me and darren did that um so yeah i mean no no it was um it's definitely the right thing for for me and um yeah my family at the yeah, times exactly so yeah no i mean and, and and the band went on you know still do cool things as well so um no, that was, it was, it was the right thing to do yeah it's a win-win really so um yeah, so. what what have, what have been your management highlights since you've been managing bands yeah yeah i mean well this was the thing because i suppose that that was another part of of, of me leaving is is when you, you know, we 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 had done cool things, and we, I'd all, I'd almost pretty much checked off my bucket list of of things I wanted to do. You know, like even those ridiculous, unattainable ones of touring with Iron Maiden. You know, or <laughs> touring America, or going to Japan, or or you know, having a gold record and things like that. You know, you tick them off. You know, having that magazine cover, blah blah blah, and you tick them off, and then you know, you'd done them, then they 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 they, they were done, and. Um, I sort of missed that, you know. I sort of missed the little, the little things, the just all those milestones then that that I could never have again. And um, and to be honest, you know, that that's the things that that I've been most proud of with, honestly, every band I've worked with. You know, when you see their their first ever, um, you know, their a magazine cover or or the you know the first time that you know the week that their album is released or the first time they sell out a show or you know win win an award is it's that every time over, you know, and, and that's and that's what what keeps me still so passionate about doing this is, is reliving those those um, those milestones with them, you know. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I feel 
you know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's almost as, as fulfilling as, as when I did it for the first time, you know, the first time I got signed or the first time I saw the band, you know, saw Funeral for a Friend in a magazine or, or the first time hearing it on a radio or, or seeing the video on TV. I just get to have those moments now again and again and again, which yeah, is yeah. the best thing about what I do. So, I mean, you know, I get those type of moments, those, those proud moments um on a regular basis yeah. which is which is which is so fulfilling really for you know for me and um and obviously for them too yeah well you must be doing something right if you keep getting those moments over and over again so that's a really good sign so who who are you managing right now um so yeah so so i i was when i when i when i left um for raw pie you know, I, was, I was there for, for quite a long time and um i managed bands like uh, bull of my valentine and um tonight live from australia and some i was doing a lot of asian and japanese stuff which was my thing for a while uh, cross faith and yeah. um and bands like that but um but yeah when i when i left um so that was 2018 a similar sort of thing to when i left the band really is that i was working in in, in london um uh, for raw power management and um as work as i was there like sort of three or four days a week so, so it was you know most of most of the week and then if there was if there was anything on the weekends you know such as a, a london gig or whether there was a, a festival across the weekend i'd be there too so you know s s sometimes i you know, there'd be months where i'd just be again gone same way as i uh, i used to be yeah. boring really so so we got to that again so so what I wanted to do then is I was like, right, you know, I'm going to come back home. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, start my own company, which is future history management. And, um, I'm going to do it from home. I'm going to, um, you know, work with bands from the ground, you know, I'm going to build this from the ground up essentially. Um, so, so the first bands that, that I had on the roster then was, um, was holding absence then from, you know, a UK, well, Welsh band yeah. who, uh, who, who I had brought into raw power at the time. Um, but so, well, when I left, you know, they, they, they came with me then. So, so, so that was cool. Um, and the band then called, um, called sleep token then, which who, who, who are doing really good things now. Um, we signed them to, to to Universal, and um, they've been doing a lot, a lot of stuff in, in 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 America as well, which which is really cool. Um, oh. So that, that's got a good head of steam. That's that's something different. Uh, Loathe, then um, you know, heavier band who they, they released their second album back in February, and people are, are really really digging that. Um, they, they, I think they they've ended up in m most, if not all, of the uh, rock magazines like top um albums of 2020 so far which is which, oh, wow. which, which has been really cool um and then a band from bristol then called called fox joe who um just released their debut album on friday just just, yeah, just yeah. on actually which um and people are really taking notice of that now which is cool they're, they're a great band you know the really original sounding band it's almost they, they get so many comparisons but to all different people i think the most common ones are like sort of a mix between early biffy system of a down and like sound garden <laughs> and oh, stuff nice. like that. which is you know it's uh they they, they they put their own spin on things um so so that's really cool so that's really cool um and yeah one of the other things i'm working on then is um when um when moose left bull of my valentine um you know, he, he he had a couple of years out because you know he left um to have a kid and everything yeah. else um, so he's put a, a new band together then called Killer Lights. So we just signed to the Fearless Records. They were meant to play their first shows last month. Um, yeah. The first proper show would have been Download Festival, and they wow. had a they had, they had a warm up show at um, Bridgend, which is where Moose is from. Um, sort of, you know, where, where Bullet from where where I live. Um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, they're they're doing their thing there. Um, so their debut album is. Can I even say that it's coming out next month? Yeah, I can. I just have. So. Yeah. Okay. You hear the first. Oh, cool. Yes, announcing that, and um, and yeah, you just just got. Um, I've, I've got people then. Um, a um, couple of you know good good uh, people working with me. Um, sort of building up some some newer younger bands as well. Um, I got Sean Sean Smith then from the Blackout is um, is um, doing doing some managerial stuff with me with um, with, with with Junior then a band from Cardiff who. Nice. Uh, released their debut album um, last summer. And one of the guys in there wrestles for the, the WWE, uh, which, yeah, is, which is quite fun, which is a 
my, my love of those two things. And, um, and yeah, we got a really, really cool, uh, working on a, a debut record for a really cool band from Newport then called the nightmares who, um, used to, it's really cool, uh, goth, uh, gothy sort of pop thing where, uh, one, one of the guys was in, um, a band sharks a while back who were cool. One of the guys was in save your breath and, and the best Isles, but it's, um, really, re yeah, really cool, um, thing that we're, working on there so hopefully be hearing more about those guys next year yeah like well, all the bands you mentioned i definitely have heard of or listened to at some point um hmm. fox, fox joy i've actually downloaded the new album on spotify but i haven't had a chance to listen to it yet but um i think you'll dig it man i think it'll be up your street. Yeah. yeah it does sound like especially the sound garden because they were a band I, I i discovered sound garden like 20 years too late <laughs> and then they were like my favorite band for a couple of years so um, yeah, well, they, 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 <laughs> how it works. for me, comparisons to different things, you you, you can't pin it down to. It. Yeah, they're they're very um they're very eclectic. But, right, I, um, I like yeah, bands so, like that. That's that's. I think when you when you find a band that you can't directly compare them to one band, I think that's normally what makes them unique. So exactly, yeah, exactly, and uh, it's it's very much that record. So I mean, people are people seem to be enjoying it so far. Um, so yeah, they they're doing their their first ever UK headline tour next next February. So that's going to be awesome. Well, hopefully, anyway. I mean, <laughs> oh, well, exactly. Hopefully, I think everyone's hoping. We, we we will we will see we will see. No yeah, man, I'll, I'll check it out tonight. Hopefully. Yeah, I know yeah. what you think, man. Yeah, we'll do. Um, yeah, so you you mentioned kind of funeral for a friend called it a day after you'd left, like a few years yeah. after, um, and then obviously last year when you, one of your biggest fans. Big Stu um, fell ill, and yeah. could you tell us about what the band did for for him and his family? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, you know, Big Stu it was basically um, well. The reason he was called Big Stu, he's is very, very tall. I'm not, I'm not sure what his official height was, but I mean, he was one of those people who just towered over everybody. And um, especially for me, being a drummer, every time if he was in the crowd, I would see him because he yeah. would just be. You know that um, that level above above everyone else, but um, you know, aside from being being that guy and, and always being in the crowd, he was um, he was um, well one of the biggest. Um, well, I, we call we call him our, our biggest fan, basically. You know, as a sort of um, in, just for him being his size and through what he did for us, really, which was um, way back in the day when we were starting out, before there was. MySpace, or before you know, certainly before there was Twitter or Facebook or anything else, the people would have forums. You know, you'd have your you'd have your online forums for those who remember those. And um, and Stu um, made the first ever Funeral for a Friend fan forum uh, oh, for people to go, you know, and go on and talk about the band. And um, you know, he, he went out of his way to um, like buy the first website for us really you know he um he, he went out and spent money and time making uh, a website for us you know with the forum on there and he would update that himself and um spread the word um and, and get other people into us and um and he, you know he would continue to do that all throughout the time that the band was, was going and, and not just that then he would organize um like the first time we would go somewhere uh with the band i mean I mean, the first time we would tour somewhere, you know, the first time we would tour, um, when we toured America, you know, he, he, he um, got together like a, a group of people from the forum to organize the trip for them to like come out to a show in the States to support us. Um, you know, he came to, I'm pretty sure he came to Australia one time, you know, and um, he, took, he, he would turn up randomly. I mean, it goes without saying in the UK, he'd always pop his head up, but, um, you know, he'd come out to Europe and, and pop out in some random European city and, and everything else, you know. So, so he did, he did a lot for us. Um, he, did, he, did, he did so much for us. And then, and obviously, we, we broke up in 2016 and he, he was at the last shows and, and everything there. But, um, but then, yeah, in, um, in early, early um, last year, then he, he, he'd been ill anyway. He'd had, he'd had some heart issues that, that he'd overcome. But, um, but then, yeah, last year, then he, um, he he'd fallen ill again, then, and um, and he had been diagnosed then with terminal cancer, at um, you know at the age of thirty five or th I think thirty five at the time, um, and he's 
he's got three young kids you know he's got um three three young sons one of them is like an infant and um his oldest one i think just turned 13 and there's one like about eight or nine um around those ages anyway but uh, but yeah you know that that came through and it was like damn um you know it's firstly having the cancer um so so we we started talking you know i think i picked up the phone to chris i said oh you know have you got any old memorabilia and stuff um that we can sell maybe to make you know make some money r- raffle off and, and and try to help help out that way a little bit and um and then you know uh, it was probably only a couple of we we had that conversation so yeah yeah you know we'll rummage through we'll get some stuff together um which we did you know we had a look and see what we had but a couple of days after then he posted up another update saying you know oh well it's um you know it's been terminal you know we've been given like less than a year to, to live and so you know so obviously we spoke again it was like oh you know man i mean there's probably the th- you know we can we can do a raffle we can get some stuff together and raffle it off but but the way to really you know if we really wanted to make some money it would be doing you know doing like a charity show uh for Stu. um so you know obviously spoke to all, all the other guys and they they were on board straight away and it's like yeah let's do it cool. let's do it um and then we spoke to johnny phillips i know i mentioned earlier it was the, the original drummer was at sjm as a promoter and said you know yeah we'll come on board and um you know, SGM will um, put these shows on, and um, you know we won't take anything for it. You know, we will we'll, we'll put everything back in as well. Um, so, which it, which turned out, we you know we we were gonna, I think uh, it was originally gonna be, we'll do one show in in Cardiff, and um, and then we were looking at doing one show in Nottingham, then which is which is where Stu was from, you know, which is where where Stu was living. But um, as it turned out, we couldn't get any availability for for, for Nottingham, and um, she was like, "All right, we'll do we'll do one Cardiff show, and we'll do one London show." Then um, and we obviously didn't know how many people would want to come, so we put like a globe on sale uh, in Cardiff, which is about three you know three fifty max uh, capacity, and then put on um, a London show, then a, a Shepherd's Bush Empire, which is like. I don't know what was it 2000 and that was yeah so that was going to be that anyway but um actually no was that even the London show maybe it was somewhere smaller but um but yeah we put those on sale anyway and um they like literally sold out on in, in seconds so we upgraded the globe then to the uni and then that sold out in seconds so we're like right we'll add another two uni shows so then they sold out and then we and then I, I can't remember where, where was the London show but we upgraded that anyway um to the London show. So anyway, yeah. So we so we we did those three shows, and um, obviously a lot of a lot of people came there uh, to those three shows and r- raised a lot of money there, and um, not just through that, but through the merchandise as well. And um, a lot of people who couldn't be there then either bought merchandise online or they um, uh, contributed to the to the to the the GoFundMe or yeah um, yeah to, to the charity um, fund. Which uh, so so yeah so. I th- obviously it was a awful thing for the for the family to to go through you know uh, yeah you know his um his whole family you know especially his his sons but um but thankfully between between us and between um you know the fans and, and sjm and, and everyone else who managed to to make uh you know a nice amount of money for the for the um for the boys you know for the for, for the three sons so, yeah. so you know, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna have that as a sort of um you know, nest egg because that, that was one of Stu's things. He was, um, he'd been ill for so, like I said, he had issues with his heart before that, so he'd been ill and off work for, for, for a long time. And, um, you know, I had a conversation with him like uh, probably about a week before he died, you know, and he, and he was like, I didn't, I, I had nothing to, to pass on to my boys, like, you know, I had nothing yeah, to, right. to pass on to the kids at all. Um, I think he is literally said, you know, it was all a I've got is like an Xbox. This is has been such a massive thing that I can. I know my boys are going to be all right, really. Which is which is why we, you know, which is what we wanted him yeah. to have. You know, that um, I don't know that that peace. You know that um, just to know that they'd be looked after. So so you know he really appreciated that. Um, and um, and yeah, so so that, so it was great to be, to be able to do that. I mean, you know, it's uh, you know, I, I guess if you want to 
you asked me earlier what you know what our proudest moment was it'd be that yeah hands down really so no totally that's it was such an amazing gesture really um i've never really heard of anything done to such a scale before for you know one of your fans so, or of any band so that's amazing so well yeah congrats. i mean and and um and i uh, you know as, as i was talking to Stu after we'd announced it and everything um and he was you know oh, you know thanks for doing this and i was like you know look man you know it's um it's you've also given something to us as as well really the, the fact that that we get to go out and do these shows because it would have never happened we'd have never played again if it wasn't for that yeah. um you know you, you've sort of you've brought us back together you've you've brought a lot of people back together um you know in the crowd and um the, all those old friends you know there, there were so many old friends who hadn't seen each other in years um getting back together to come to these shows and everything like that and i said to you know i was like you know you, i said to him you've um inadvertently done a lot for me because my daughter hadn't seen me play until <clears throat> since, you know, since she was a baby, really, you know, a little kid. Um, and my son had never seen me play. So for them to be able to to have that as well, you know, for me to yeah. be able to, to play and for, and for them to see, you know, what dad used to do was, uh, yeah. was, was really cool as well. So, you know, so, you know, I said that to him, you know, and, um, and, it was just nice that we had that like reciprocal thing. I was like, you know, look, we've done something for you, you've done something for us, so let's uh, we'll call it even. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. yeah. I think it's a very good point, man. Um, well, obviously, your your kids can see you again next year. Yeah, you've just you've literally just announced. Uh, is it, well, I'm assuming it's a one-off tour. I don't know. Do you wanna? It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we were um, when we. So when we did those three shows last year, you know, it was because um, Matt, our singer, lives li lives in Germany. Um, so obviously it was a big thing for him to to come, you know, fly back over here and um, rehearse because he he said himself, you know, I haven't I haven't sung in about three years. <laughs> um, so so you know, fair play to everyone for for getting back and um, getting back into the swing of things and learning everything and, and coming for the rehearsals. But he was like, oh, you know, he's, he's like, you boys understand now. This is, this is just going to be this. And, I, and we were all cool with it. He was like, yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. It was fine. Because um, to be honest, we didn't know how the shows were going to go. Um, you know, we hadn't played together in so long. Uh, I hadn't played a gig in, I mean, eight years, something like that. You know, I hadn't played a gig in so long and hadn't been playing drums regularly either, really. So it could, it, it could have been a mess. And, and it turned out. It, we we hadn't even rehearsed together until like ten days before the shows wow. because obviously Matt had to come over and everyone you know some some people had to get time off work it, we had to yeah. you know we couldn't, we couldn't just get together like that um, but it came together really quick um, we, we we were we were pretty surprised really and uh, I'm pleased that we we'd um, we'd come together and it was like ah this actually sounds all right <laughs> oh, it's not bad yeah and, and I, we we had booked you know we we'd uh, we'd aired on this on the side of caution we booked like a week's worth of rehearsals and uh i think you know by by the third day at the end of the third day it was like you know we were booked in until whatever the place closes at eight or whatever and we were it was about four o'clock and we were just like i'm just go for a beer it's not only fine <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah you know we we we'd, we'd pop in we'd, we'd, we'd pop in then for the rest of that week that we had booked and we'd we'd go in for a couple of hours maybe, you know, um, and, uh, you know, play through the set once or twice and then just talk for the rest of it really. Um, nice. So it was like, yeah, this come together a lot quick, better than we thought we would. And then the shows went really good as well. Uh, we, you know, we loved the shows. They, they went as good as they could have gone really, you know, they couldn't, have, they couldn't have gone better. And, um, and we all, you know, after, after the third show, we, like you know that's it that's fine that was brilliant wow and then literally then on the on the day after we um those of us who lived in in wales so i mean me gav rich um darren because chris lives in in london we were um we were in the van then on the, on the way home and um and my phone uh went and it was uh it was it was andy coppin from from uh from live nation from the promoter of download and um I was like, ah, I think I know what this is about. Yeah. 
so yeah so, so he's like oh you know i i heard uh heard last night was amazing sorry i couldn't be there it's like yeah no it was great man it was great and he's like look i know it was like a one-off but you know what do you guys think about um you know headlining the uh the avalanche stage a download next year i was like ah oh, well and I, and I was still on a real high from the night before this and i was like oh, oh yeah I'll, I'll speak to the guys now i mean Oh yeah, I'll see what they say. And I, obviously everyone's in the van with me, you know, sort of uh, eavesdropping on my conversation. And um, I put the phone and they were like, who's that? I was like, oh, it's Andy Coppin from Download. And he's like, oh, all right. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he wants us to, to play next year. And Gab was like, fuck all, I'll play. <laughs> <laughs> and all the boys were like, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it's good. yeah, I wouldn't mind. Like, it's good when any of these shows. And they're like, yeah. I was like, let me ask... I, I was like, let me ask Chris first, because because Matt was on a plane at that time because right. he had flown back to Germany, so he, he was literally in midair. I was like, I'll see what Chris thinks now. And Chris was like, Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. And um, and then so it was all sort of down to Matt then. Um, to be honest, I think most of us thought, I ah, probably not gonna do it, you know, because he said that he didn't, you know, didn't want to do another one. Yeah. Um, and he's. And, and in fairness, he was like, well, you might have to give me a week or two because I got like things at home I need to sort because um, he's living in Germany and, um, you know, his wife's German. And he's got to do uh, like a cultural integration course. You know, he's got to do like a, um, um, you know, go learn, obviously learn German, German. to a standard and, and German history and stuff like that. So 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 he had that like um, book, a sort of a semester of that booked in. Uh, so he had to work that out. But, uh, but yeah, he, he was down for doing it. So, and then obviously, we were, so, so that was meant to be last month. We were meant to be doing download. Um, so as soon as it was apparent that it wasn't going to happen, um, we were like, oh, well, we're really looking forward to that. You know, it was a real, it was a real letdown. We were like, ah, so, should we just do a tour, you know? do So we were going to do that. We were going to do that tour then this year, like November or something like that. Oh, right, okay. Originally, that's what we were going to do because it was like, you know, we haven't done download, so... <clears throat> we'll do this tour in November but um, as we started to realize that that was unrealistic and we're like all right well put that um, put that to next year then um, so yeah so that so that's that's uh, that's what we did so yeah we we're on a uh, on tour next next April doing um, going around the UK uh, a little bit and yeah, tickets on sale Friday so I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes I'm excited Awesome. So yeah. So by the time this goes out, they'll all be already be out. So um, whether there'll be any left, I don't know. <laughs> well, Poss- yeah. possibly not, but you never know. Well, they might have to make us start adding shows again. I don't know. Yeah, upgrading. Have a word with Matt about. Yeah. yeah. Is it, so is it? I, I don't know whether you can. Is there any chance of download next year? Was that? Is that something? I don't know at this know. point. Um, no. I mean, I assume so at the moment because it's um, you know they've announced the new dates um, and it's on sale and everything. Um, so they've obviously, I, I would you know yeah they 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 have definitely done their, their their due diligence you know their research and and on how the timelines look in and the the safety procedures that they might have to put in place or whatever. So um, so yeah, I mean as far as I know at the moment, download twenty twenty one looks to be. Looks to be going ahead, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's what I mean. We don't know if they're going to book you for that for next year, or. Um. Yeah. Not. Not. Not quite. No. Not quite sure what the. No. I mean. I, I suppose they're in a. They're in a bit of a, a strange situation at the moment where. Yeah. I'm sure they want to keep um you know stuff that was meant to play this year, but then obviously there's there's different bands then on cycle next year. Yeah. Look, yeah. So it's it's a bit like trying to. Trying to find that middle ground, I suppose. Um, so, so I guess that's where that's where they're at at the minute. Yeah, so, yeah, totally. So. I think a lot of the festivals are obviously trying <laughs> to trying to rebook as many of the bands as they can. But obviously, they, some bands have already made an, other commitments for next year. You know, with like you said, yeah, touring yeah. cycles happen, don't they? <laughs> well, this is it. I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure there was. You know, when they were putting together the bill for download 2020, they had. People they probably asked who weren't available, um, yeah, because they were, I know, writing an album. And but those bands maybe probably will be available next year, you know, for next year yeah. and want to and want to do it and have an album out. So, so I suppose you know, for the um, for Andy and his um, and his team is probably a bit of a bit of a juggling act to go yeah. there, trying to, 
trying to work that all out. So, um, so yeah, yeah we'll have to see. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't, wouldn't want to be trying to organise a festival <laughs> no. right now. That's a logistical headache. Yeah, yeah totally. Run for the song podcast. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Like I mentioned in the introduction, this interview will be split into two episodes. So the second half of this interview will be in episode three. So uh, hopefully you can stick around for that. In the next episode, we'll talk more about Ryan's drums and the companies that he uses. We'll talk about uh, some of his side projects, which are very interesting. Ryan will also talk about how he started playing the drums. He'll also have some tips and advice for drummers out there in regards to songwriting and writing drum parts. He also talks about some funny touring stories involving Rolf Harris, his favourite country to tour. We also talk about wrestling and video games. And of course, he'll also tell us about who would be in his dream band with himself on drums. So thanks again for listening, guys. Don't forget, you can follow me on social media at Drum for the Song on Instagram and Twitter. On Facebook, you can search Dane Campbell Drummer. And I've also got an official Drum for the Song Facebook group, so you can search for that. If you really enjoy these podcasts and think you'll enjoy more, you can also support me on Patreon, where there'll be separate tiers for some exclusive bonuses from as little as £3 a month. And wherever you're listening, don't forget to subscribe. If you can leave a review or comment, that would be great too. And leave me a five-star review on iTunes. That would be really appreciated as it helps me in the search results. So until next time, take it easy and don't forget to drum for the song.